Welcome to Social Innovation, the Kaleidoscope, created by the Cambridge Center for Social Innovation. We share the different colors and facets of social innovation around the world. I'm Berenice Pardo. Could you tell me who you are just in a nutshell and what do you do? Yes, so my name is Gina. I am uh, the director of Play Included and we are a social enterprise, a community interest company. And we specialize in training professionals how to support children with social communication um, through collaborative play with Lego bricks. So um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a clinical psychologist by background, but I've uh, migrated into to the world of, of uh, social enterprise uh, to set up my um, my company along with um, Dr. Eleanor Brett, who's an educational psychologist and the other director of our of Play Included. This um, brings me perfectly to my next question, uh, which is relating to your background. Um, how did you transition from your PhD in clinical psychology specializing in autism to becoming a social entrepreneur? So um, I've always been interested in children and supporting children with their development and, and play. So um, I, I studied this approach of, of using Lego bricks to support um, children on the autism spectrum with social development and, um, and then became more interested in clinical psychology. So I was working in the NHS, but I suppose more and more people who knew about this methodology of using Lego bricks to support children with their social development um, more and more people kept asking me well how do I do it what should I do I'd love to do this this program as well so um, it's called the brick by brick program that's that's the name we've, we've given to it so um, I thought I'd just set up some training in my spare time and do it at weekends and be in the NHS as a clinical psychologist and and occasionally do some some training for for people in in the brick by brick program Got, just got so much interest so um then I went back to my PhD supervisor to say hey I've got all this interest is there you know is there some way to get some help so through the university they passed me on to the incubator program at Cambridge Social Ventures um so I took part in that and that's when I took the plunge and set up as a community interest company with the support of Karen Anderson and, and the team at Cambridge Social Ventures from this incubator program uh what do you think uh, that was the most the most surprising thing that you learned or the most unexpected i think there were lots of surprising and helpful things um i really really valued meeting the other members of the cohort so there was just such a wide range of inspirational people really passionate about their particular enterprise and and the breadth was so varied and i think that was so interesting um, to learn with people and from people who are from very different backgrounds doing very different things but with that kind of same passion and drive to to, to make their social enterprise work out I wanted to ask you, I, I read on your website that you started, as you said, um, focusing on children and younger people with autism, but then at some point you broadened um, the people you were catering to. Was it um, a part of a CSV analysis that, that you were doing when you discovered this or how did this come to be? Mm -hmm. So I think um, because I started out um, doing my PhD looking at, at supporting autistic children, um, that was where we started and the research evidence for the brick by brick program sort of grew from that evidence base and it's important to have some research to back up what you're doing. Um, but you know, all children need support with social communication. It's, um, you know, we don't want to single out a particular diagnosis or a particular challenge. Um, and actually there might be many reasons why a child might want a bit of extra help with friendships and relationships for a whole host of reasons. So I think, um, you know, there's a, we want to reduce the stigma for autism because, you know, we don't want to sing, they've got lots of ability to communicate. Actually the latest research coming out so social interactions between autistic people together are are just as good it's it's when 
um, autistic individuals and, and neurotypical individuals try and communicate that maybe there's a mismatch and a misunderstanding there. So we don't want to kind of um, stigmatize a particular diagnosis. Um, and also we want to um, you know, offer, offer support to, to more children who might need help. Um, I think the, the benefit, as you said, is for everyone. So why, why focus in, in one group then? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, could you explain how the therapy works? Yeah, so it's, um, it's just really simple. It's a learning through play concept. So rather than um, building Lego models together, um, children build Lego models collaboratively as a team um, and just by kind of breaking the task of Lego building down into different roles, different tasks, um, children need to collaborate, they need to talk to each other, they need to take it in turns, they need to problem solve together. Um, so a lot of natural learning happens through play and then the facilitator, the adult supporting the groups, um, stands back mostly and, and sees the children um, working together and, and problem solving together. But if they need to, they can facilitate and support them to develop um, particular social problem solving skills or strategies for communicating that, that they might need um, to make the collaborative Lego model, the Lego building work. So, yeah. On, on your website, I also saw that you have um, resources available for playing at home with the yeah. parents and um, do the parents have to undergo a certain training to be able to play uh, with the children then no so um the we've just really wanted to make something freely available for parents to to support their children at home and and really focus on relationship and communication and and connection um so i feel like um the activities themselves are fairly self-explanatory. You don't need any special training as a parent to use them. You can just print them off, download them for free. And if you've got a few Lego bricks at home um, to, to use, then um, you can build together and, and have fun together. And I, I guess uh, parents also have their instinct because when I was reading it, I thought, oh, and if the children doesn't want to do it, then what do I do? <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know what? That's the most important thing is that it doesn't matter if the children don't want to do it. Don't do it. It's low key. Like do something else. It's fine. It's all about following the child's lead. Okay. I'm going to practice my auntie's skills and maybe try it with my. <laughs> oh, good idea. <laughs> 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 um. In, in creating this uh, Brick Club or these resources for the families, um, which challenges have you faced um, when developing the program or the availability to, to the children? Yeah, so I think what we're thinking about at the moment um, is scaling up our program internationally and how do we do that um, with as much quality as we can because whilst we care about making it widely available to more children and families, we also um, want to make sure it's done well and um, with high quality as, as our goal. Um, so that's been a challenge that we've been trying to overcome and think about in different parts of the world. So we've, we've been spending the past year really coming up with this strategy and working with some consultants on our strategy for scaling, um, thinking about online training versus face to face training. And of course, with the COVID-19 pandemic, online trainings boomed, hasn't it? But there's something about experiential learning face to face that we don't want to lose and we feel is important to our program. So trying to replicate that online has been really difficult. Do you have any specific countries that you're looking into at the moment or? Yeah, so um, we're thinking of thinking about um, maybe the United States and um, maybe Denmark and Mexico and other countries in Europe. But we do have trainers in Hong Kong and in Greece and Ireland and the mm -hmm. UK. So um, and in New Zealand, too. So we're kind of thinking quite quite broadly so yeah we want to we also want to think about um 
you know, not just high income countries, but other countries too. And, and but I think there'll be a lot of cultural adaptations and and how do we make it work in, in very different countries and different setups to, to the UK. So that's a really interesting challenge too. I'm excited to see what, what happens in that <laughs> area. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I was also um, reading that is specifically, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, uh, but specifically for the scalability, mm. um, you partnered with the Lego Foundation. Um, how did this partnership um, uh, originate and what's, um, what you're doing with them? Yeah, so we've been um, working really closely with the Lego Foundation this year, um, thinking about our strategy for scaling and um, incorporating a lot of learning through play into the Brick by Brick program. So the Lego Foundation um, are really, and, and play included, we're all strongly aligned on this, the importance of learning through play for children's development. I think they're really um, amazingly supportive of what we're doing and have got so much knowledge and experience on, on playful facilitation, on training, on child development and contacts in different countries. Um, so as well as the kind of financial support they're giving us, there's a, there's a wealth of kind of information and experience and knowledge that, that we're drawing on with our partnership with the Lego Foundation. So I feel very fortunate to be working together. Um, and now you mentioned a keyword, the financial support. <laughs> <laughs> Looking into the future, um, one of the things that um, Cambridge Social Ventures tries, uh, as you'll know, um, to, to focus on is to develop a sustainable financial plan, so mm, to speak. Yeah. Um, how uh, is Play Included working towards that sustainability? Yeah, that's a great question. So we, we've, we're very lucky we've got funding from the Lego Foundation at the moment, but um, part of our work with them and, and with our business strategy that we've been thinking about this year is, is to, to ensure that in sort of five years time our play included our business can can stand alone and is sustainable by itself without sort of need of grant funding and um, so we've been working really hard on thinking about how we do that how we do that through our training and resources or seeking funding from elsewhere but um so far our business model looks like it in theory will work <laughs> so we'll have to implement it in the next couple of years and see see how we go with our with our training and our training for trainers uh model and um and yeah go from there uh, you also mentioned um the um broadening your impact etc and another important thing of a social enterprise is to measure the impact mm -hmm. um how did you go about um setting your measurements of your impact yeah so this is this is really important and we're still kind of working on it um at the moment we measure the number of people that we've trained so the number of professionals that we've trained um and that's a kind of basic marker of of who we train and what countries they're in and we've got up to about 2,000 trainers in about 40 countries um practitioners in 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 40 countries so far roughly um but we also want to then think about the number of children we reach as well so we're using a proxy at the moment of um say we train one facilitator maybe they'll work with around 10 children five to ten children in a year so we can kind of work out roughly the number of children that we we are reaching through that but in the future what we're going to do or what we're trying to set up is like a an annual registration of facilitators and they can tell us how many children that they've worked mm. with and so we can gather slightly more accurate data on all of that yeah if i could give you a magic wand and yeah. i could tell you i could ask you what do you want like in five ten years from now where do you see play included what would that be it's, it's fascinating because if i think five years ago like there's no way on earth i'd have imagined that we'd be where we are now <laughs> So who knows what can happen in five years, an awful lot. But I think um, I'd love it if there were, you know, we had a really robust program of um, brick clubs where children could access them if they wanted them, run by high, highly, you know, highly qualified practitioners, facilitators re who really know their stuff and, and have access to kind of ongoing support and, and communities of practice so that 
really believe in this, this iteration and this innovation and feeding new ideas back down into the brick club practice on a day-to-day -day level um, and ideally that will be happening in you know many countries in the world with culturally adapted programs and, and lots of lots of happy children lovely <laughs> there's no other word <laughs> for me just imagining the um yeah just lots of children in the world playing and developing skills that's just um i think something that our world needs <laughs> yeah i agree 